the question of where life, biodiversity and organismal complexity came from has always been one of the fundamental existential questions of humanity and is today covered in modern science by evolutionary biology. The question if Darwin's theory is a fact is as well a core question in the evolution creation debate. Some atheists regard evolution as one of the main reasons to discard creationism, and as consequence, theism is viewed with skepticism and incredulity. In 1859, Darwin published On the Origin of Species, which has become the foundation of modern biological sciences until today. In 1942, Julian Huxley, a British evolutionary biologist, published the book Evolution, the Modern Synthesis, which was a fusion of various disciplines like genetics, covered by population genetics, experimental genetics and systematics, paleontology, botany, and so on. The modern synthesis went gradually through further improvements, and the more recent version was a new conceptual framework proposed in 2007 by Massimo Pellucci and Gerd Müller in their book Extended Evolutionary Synthesis. They incorporated new information from molecular genetics and genomics, describing new kinds of hereditary and replicatory mechanisms which were not considered within the framework of the previous versions. Many books have been written over the years with the purpose to disprove Darwin's theory, and many pointing out successfully why his theory does not withstand scrutiny. The number of scientists of various biological disciplines and biochemistry who disagree has grown into the thousands. One group declared, we are skeptical of claims of the ability of random mutation and natural selection to account for the complexity of life. The claim of the standard theory is that a rather small toolkit of genetic modifications during long periods of time based on random genetic errors explains the rise of genetic modification and new information and as a result the enormous range of biodiversity proposing mutations and natural selection, genetic drift, gene flow and artificial breeding by human intervention as why these scents are modified. In 2017, Gerd Müller, theoretical biologist, stated Biological sciences have made significant advances in the last decades, providing a wealth of new knowledge about the factors responsible for organismal development processes. The modern synthesis and its various additions concentrate on genetic and adaptive variation in populations. The extended framework emphasizes the role of epigenetic processes, ecological interactions, and systems dynamics in the make of organismal complexity. Single level and unilinear causation is replaced by multi-level and reciprocal causation. Among other consequences, the extended framework overcomes many of the limitations of traditional gene-centric explanations. Several of the cornerstones of the traditional evolutionary framework need to be revised and new components incorporated into a common theoretical structure. Gerd Müller is part of a group of scientists which propose an alternative to the standard evolutionary model called the third way. Remarkably, in their opening statement, they say that creationism depends upon intervention by a divine creator. That is clearly unscientific because it brings an arbitrary supernatural force into the evolution process. First of all, it has not been established beyond any doubt that naturalistic evolutionary processes account for biodiversity. Scientific investigation should permit the evidence to lead wherever it is, without excluding intelligent causation a priori. Excluding one possible answer, namely intelligent design, means committing the same philosophical error back in the 19th century with the X Club and Darwin's bulldog Thomas Oxley, when they did the same. An important distinction is made between micro and macro evolution. The common claim is that small changes lead over time period of billions of years 
to big changes, and small variations permit the rising of new biological structures and functions, and levels of complexity, from a universal common ancestor to all forms of life. This claim, however, has never been shown to be true. It's a common assertion, even held today by the majority of biologists, that microevolution leads to macroevolution. The article in Nature magazine, for example, claims in its conclusion remarks. Darwin's proposal merits further consideration as a viable link between microevolution and macroevolution. Let's clarify. Organisms can and do adapt to the environment, which is often described as microevolution, but would be better described as adaptation. It is life essential and had to be fully set up when life began. Natural selection on the limited scale is a fact, but even in regards to adaptation or microevolution, not the main driving mechanism that explains it. The main dispute is the claim that all organisms descend from a universal common ancestor, and the idea that unguided, unintelligent natural processes explain biodiversity. In his book, Darwin suggests that all living organisms are related by ascendancy, and therefore they are all derived from ancestral species, which migrate around the world and diversify, generating the amazing biodiversity of organisms. Variational plasticity and adaptation, which are mentioned in points 1 to 5, are empirically demonstrated facts. What is in dispute, however, are points 6 and 7, universal common ancestry and macroevolution. The claim that all biodiversity is explained by unguided, unintelligent, purposeless natural processes without intelligence involved. There are various aspects and ways of how we can analyze evolution, like for example doing comparative anatomy, systematic classification of life, and elaboration of the supposed phylogenetic tree of life. Then there is the analysis of the fossil record by paleontologists and the attempt to establish a line of transitional fossils demonstrating evolution variation in population genetics, quantitative genetics, how it is modified under certain selection regimes. And another aspect is the investigation of how organisms acquire more and more complexity, the emergence of varied body plans, architectures, physiology and functions. And there is the aspect and question of Evo Divo, of developmental biology, that compares the developmental processes of different organisms to infer the ancestral relationships between them and how developmental processes supposedly evolved. And last not least, the origin of consciousness, mind, logic, speech, languages covered by anthropology, linguistics and social sciences. Before we can ask about the mechanisms and the origin and the maintenance of body plans, we need to ask what is currently responsible for the development of complex multicellularity and organism architecture, form and cell shape. We need to understand how an organism develops to adulthood, which permits us with that framework as a starting point to do top-down research to understand how the responsible toolkit and rules for organismal complexity could have emerged in the past. In fact, it is a development program which sets how a multicellular organism develops. So we have to define what that development program consists of in order to know what has to change for an organism to change its physiology and complexity. So that change of the development program is what would have to change for an organism to change, and that has given rise to very varied programs of evolutionary disciplines and research programs. It has become more and more evidently clear that a varied multitude of different mechanisms is responsible for body constructions, which are not limited to genetics, but mainly, if not even more important, epigenetic factors. And not only 
on an intracellular level, but physiology on a multi-layered level, which is investigated in systems biology. The real mechanisms that explain biodiversity and complex organismal architecture is pre-programmed instructional complex information encoded in various genetic and epigenetic languages and communication by various signaling codes to various signaling networks. That brings us to the origin of all life forms by an intelligent designer.